to you by Allstate, whose policies now include protection for your home, your family, as well as your car. You're in good hands with Allstate. And now, let's all play What's My Line? From New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you. And now it's my pleasure to present a very darling man who is taking over on Tuesday night from another darling man, Gary Moore, Mr. George Goble. And uh, now, a uh, lady whom even spooky old Alice will admit is very, very lovely, Miss Arlene <laughs> Francis. And now, the president of perhaps the most successful publishing house in the world. <laughs> Why not? Random House, and here he is, Random Sir. <laughs> George, great to have you. Thank you. One of the funniest men on television, I think. Well, you may have been reading in the papers this week about the Xanthanthropus, which is the oldest prehistoric man, even earlier than Pithecanthropoid man, discovered by archaeologists. Well, I want to introduce you to one of the leading descendants of this Xanthanthropus, <laughs> John Charles Daly. <laughs> Now, if I wanted to be unkind, I would point out that Bennett didn't say anything about any of my ancestors having tails. Yeah. And I would make some comment about Bennett's origin, but I don't want to be unkind. <laughs> Actually, uh, I don't feel I can. Bennett's taking to the road. It isn't enough that spring's coming. Where is it you're going to? Uh, Clinton, Iowa? Detroit, Indianapolis? Clinton, Iowa. Clinton, Iowa. Indianapolis, Detroit, and Clinton, Iowa. You're all warned. He's coming. <laughs> so cut down the trees. Very nice to have you with us, Mr. Goble. Thank you. I'm a little embarrassed. All these years I've been calling them Surf Random. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have some random occupations, which I trust will give the panel some pleasure, and you too, in the audience. We will also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first challenger. And now it's time to meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Mary M. Rasmussen, right? And Winifred Q. Collins, right? <laughs> One at a time, is it Miss or Mrs. Collins? Mrs. Mrs. Collins. And where, where are you from, Mrs. Collins? San Francisco. You were born in San Francisco? No, I was born in Montana. Ah, fine. And uh, is it Miss or Mrs. Rasmussen? Mrs. Rasmussen. Mrs. Rasmussen. And where are you from? From Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. May I present our distinguished panel? And then will you join me over here, please? Do you uh, both know how we keep score on what's my line? Yes, then we'll let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Collins and Mrs. Rasmussen are salaried and deal at a service. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Sir. Mrs. Rasmussen and Mrs. Collins, the service that you perform is done as a sort of a partnership or an association with each other? No. Well, aren't the two of you together doing this service? Well, let us say that the service which they perform has a character which is similar, but they do not perform it together. 
I mean, they work together or they wouldn't be here as, as co-guests, <laughs> would they? Yes, well, actually, they work together as a part of the overall responsibility which might lie with both of them, but they do not for instance, work in the same office, or that sort of thing, Bennett, which is what I think you had mm. reference to. And I warned you, he was coming to Indianapolis, Detroit, and Clinton. That's one out of mine to go, Mr. Kilgallen. Well, Mrs. Rasmussen and Mrs. Collins, are you in roughly the same line of work? Yes. Yes. Uh, do you service both men and women? Or is your service valuable to both men and women? Yes. 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 Uh, but you deal chiefly with uh, one sex, is that it? Yeah. Is yeah. that the masculine persuasion? No. 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 That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Goble. Uh, do you work for the same company? <laughs> In a manner of speaking, I think we could say that they work for the same company. Uh, <laughs> I pass. <laughs> Arlene? Uh, is it by any chance a non-profit making organization that you both work for? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is it some branch of the government? Yeah. Yes. Do you both work for important people in the government? Yeah. Yes. Do you both work for, I mean, would your job entail paperwork? Yeah. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Do you both take shorthand? No. No. no, three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Rasmussen and Mrs. Collins, uh, do you both do your work essentially in the same city? I mean, would it be Washington? Is it, uh, is it sometimes? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Do you work for anybody who would uh, be found uh, quite often in the White House? Well, in a manner of speaking, we would have to agree that you did, yes. Uh, would it be for? somebody connected with the executive branch of the government? Yeah. Yeah. Would it have anything to do with the president or his family? Well, I think we would have to agree that the direct line of responsibility up to the top has something to do with the president or his family, wouldn't yes. you say? Mm. Does your work affect the smooth operation of either the business or the social life in the White House? No. 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 Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, ladies, do you work for the federal payroll? Yes. Do you have anything to do with any branch of the armed forces? Yes. Uh, is it the Army, the Women's Army Corps? Yes. Uh, are you both officers in the Women's Army Corps? No. No. That's five down and five oh, to go, Mr. Goebel. <laughs> are you enlisted men in the Women's Army Corps? <laughs> I'm afraid you're going to get a no, but it was a fine question. Oh. Ms. Francis? Uh, do you wear uniforms in your job? Sometimes. Sometimes. You are in and out of uniform? Yeah. Well, let's say here, to be absolutely fair, uniforms are worn when required or indicated. Well, I know they don't wear them for nighties. I didn't mean that. <laughs> uh, uh, are you in a particular branch of the service? Yeah. Yes. You didn't, you didn't ask it for any branch. I thought it? I said the Women's oh. Army Corps. Oh. Maybe that was when I got a no. Uh, uh, do you work uh, for the Navy? Yeah. Well, one's Army and one's Navy. Well, I should, oh, you mean just one of them asked at a time. Is one, Mr. Cerf says one is Army and one is Navy. Is Mr. Cerf yes. correct? Yes. yes. Well, then I'm going to pass to Mr. Cerf because he's overcome with joy and wants to get off. <laughs> and let Random House win again. Well, um, the question is, you both do, I suppose, similar jobs, one for the Army and one for the Navy. Is that right? Right. And the, and the lady in the dark dress is the Army and the lady in the light dress is the Navy. That's right? Correct. Are you the in charge of the Women's Corps in the Navy and Army? That's yes, absolutely right. 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 That is good. <laughs> yes, sir. Doesn't that make them at least colonels? Well, actually, it makes Mrs. Collins Captain USN, and it makes uh, Mrs. Rasmussen Colonel United States Army. That's right, Captain and oh, Colonel. Yeah. And they're equal jobs, aren't they? They're Captain equal jobs. They're the commanding Navy officers, respectively, of the waves and the wax. <laughs> and what a joy it is to have you both with us, I must say. And I would, I'm going to embarrass them a little bit. 
Uh, let's say, first of all, that um, Captain Collins has been with the Navy since 1942 and played a large part in the organization of the waves and its high degree of efficiency when the country needed it so much and has a bronze star for the fine work as a decoration. Colonel uh, Rasmussen has the Legion of Merit because she too made such a great contribution to the effective organization and use of, of the WAC during the war and since then. And my congratulations to you both and to the services which you had. It's nice to have had you with us. Thank you. Bye -bye. Meet our second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Jack Cadowitz. Is that right, sir? Uh -huh. Mr. Uh, Mr. Cadowitz, where are you from? New York City. From New York City. Then, if I may, Mr. Cadowitz, our distinguished panel. You notice how I stress that distinguished? You know how we keep score with my line? Yes, fine. Then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right. Panel, Mr. Cadowitz is self employed and he deals in a product. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Cadowitz, could I use your product? Certainly not. <laughs> Certainly not? Well, that, that uh, is very properly said, but I think we would have to agree at the same time that there uh, could be circumstances uh, which would uh, suggest to you that you'd like to use it and you would be perfectly free on such an occasion to do so. <laughs> Seems to be a slight difference of opinion here. Uh, Mr. Cadowitz says certainly not. Well, he is speaking in present terms. I didn't want to be unfair, Bennett, and suggest now if you'd ask the question, I wouldn't have any trouble answering it at all. <laughs> See, Dorothy asked it, so I, I had uh, to Mr. suggest Cadwitz, to Dorothy. Would you say that your product was used more by men than women? No, not necessarily. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Goble. Uh, is it used, could it be used by men and women together? <laughs> yes. Like, uh, if Arlene and I use it together, would that make spooky old Alice mad? <laughs> well, I would say this, that uh, taking the product uh, in its <clears throat> intrinsic value, uh, it would be possible for the two of you to appear uh, at a certain place. They're desiring both of you to, to uh, uh, gain the same ends, and. Uh, you could, um... <laughs> right? Well, there you are. I guess I got him goofed up pretty good, huh? Uh, George, that's good. And besides, I think it has something to do with our end. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow, it sounds like a little something kinky is going on here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with this, uh... <laughs> Taken by itself or with somebody, would it make you healthier? Oh, yes. Uh, is it something uh, that would be taken uh, in a series as opposed to just uh, trying it one time? Properly done would be in a series. We can have a lovely relationship, George. <laughs> How long does the show run? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, I <laughs> Ali? May I ask, uh, to use a poetic form, is it anything that might shape our end? <laughs> I must, I must do here that you're speaking philosophically. Of course. Yes, no. I think we could say that. Does it have anything to do whatsoever with either exercise or reducing? Yes, yes. Uh, well, if it's something we can do together, George, uh, is it something you can uh, use as an, like an exerciser or something you might 
uh, <laughs> it does the twist for you, you don't have to do it kind of thing. It would help, yes. I forget what you call that. Uh, uh, not a bicycle built for two, but... Well, I would say this. I think it's like only a fair to say now that you have hit the basic product, which is the reducing machine. Yeah. There are many kinds yeah. of them. Well, now, but me. what does Mr. Catterwitz have to do with the reducing machine? Oh, well, I'd like to think he invented it. He looks like a very learned man. No, he didn't invent it. That's no. two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Well, has he got anything to do with the merchandising and selling of these of these uh, exercises? In machines? part, yes. Make, did he make them? And then no, I don't, don't make, make them. them. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you test them? No, I don't test Four them. Four down and six to go, Mr. Goldman. Do you put the people in them? <laughs> five down and five to go, Miss Francis. He doesn't sell them. He doesn't make them, but he... He, uh, merch, no. Models them? Uh, <laughs> inspects them. No. Uh, starts us off in them. He no. Six down and four to, to go. Them. You no. inspect them to see if they work properly? No, nothing. Seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. What do you do with those letters? Do you advert, are you an advertising man in charge of? No. no. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Goble. Uh, Oh, What's yeah. left? We, we well, no, actually, this isn't really he quite because Bennett did open the door. He rents them, which is oh, he the, rents oh. them. He rents the machine. Oh. It's the A A A Abbott Reducer Rental Company. Rental Company. Well, I don't like that A A in there. And Bennett was close. You said <laughs> merchandise <laughs> or sell, and actually, as I understand it, ultimately, if you wanted to buy, they you may could be buy. Purchased. They may be purchased. That's so right. there you are. All right. And Bennett doesn't need one, really. <laughs> Neither, Neither do we. Neither do Neither Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you very much, Mr. Kedder. <laughs> nice to have you with us and what's my life. <laughs> we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity for which the panel is always blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. indeed. Good. Will you enter Mystery Challenger and sign in, please? Different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and we'll begin with uh, Arlene Francis. That was a glorious reception. Has your picture uh, been in the paper recently in the entertainment section? No. Oh. Uh, I would say this is one I think, with our guest permission, uh, it would be hard to be exact about it. There are so many newspapers, and it's possible it could happen. In this case, we would say no, but it's, it's possible it might have happened. Mr. Sir? Have you any association, whatever, with the world of sports? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Have you any association at all with the world of space or our space program? <laughs> <laughs> no. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Goble. You get any laughs? <laughs> Uh, no. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Uh, if you are not a performer in the art, oh, are you a performer in the art? Oh, yes. Mr. Sir? Do you have anything to do with music? Yes. Miss Kilgallen? Do you play a musical instrument? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Goble. Are you a singer? Yes. Miss Francis? Uh, oh. yes. Are you a singer that has been out of the country lately? Take yes. Mr. Sir? Are you married to a very beautiful girl? <laughs> uh, yeah. Miss Gilgallan? Eddie Fisher? Eddie Fisher's <laughs> right there. <laughs> I thought we'd throw them completely when, when uh, Eddie could say, quite honestly, that he, he probably was not in the entertainment section of the newspaper, but I didn't want to really go that strongly because there's so many newspapers in the country. For the old hands, George, if you don't rem remember this, do you know the first time we saw Eddie Fisher on this program? 
No. I remember because I, I guessed Vic Damone. Yeah. And Vic yes. was in Texas laughing his head off because they were both in the armed forces at the same That's time. That's right. And Eddie was here in 1953. Three in uniform. Yeah. yeah. Were you in uniform yes, when, he, when he came on the show? I remember it very well indeed. Well, what, you're home and you busy while you're home for a bit? Yes, I'm here on some uh, Cleopatra business. Some Cleopatra. <laughs> when, is, when is that picture going to be finished, Eddie? Or is I don't think it really matters when it's going to be finished because it's going to be the greatest picture ever made and the biggest box office attraction in the history of motion pictures. And Elizabeth Taylor Fisher will win the Academy Award for it. Well, I must uh, say, <laughs> certainly we all hope with you that the, all of these prophecies come absolutely true. I'm sure they will. I am too. Thanks very much, Ed. Nice of you to come back and see us. I must say, panel, you've done rather well so far this evening, and I'm kind of proud of you, and we'll be back with another contestant after this word from our alternate speaker. And now a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Elise? Simon, is that right? <laughs> is it, um... Miss or Mrs. Simon? It's Miss. Miss Simon. Yes. Where are you from? I'm from New York City. From New York. May I present our panel, Miss Simon? Uh -huh. Will you join me over here, please? You know how we keep score and what's my line? Yes, I do. Fine, then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Panel, Miss Simon is salaried and deals in a service. And let's begin the general questioning with um, George Goebel. Uh, this service, uh, is it mostly uh, dealing with men? No, not particularly. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Do people come uh, to you to enjoy your service? No, they don't. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. You, is it human beings that you deal with primarily, Miss? Yes. Sir? And you go to them? Well, if they don't come to you, you must go to them. Well, in a manner in of speaking, sense. we would agree. Mm -hmm. In a sense. Mm -hmm. Does the, does the uh, work that you do for them, Miss Simon, involve any physical activity? In a sense, I guess you would say. No. Well, now, you mean beyond any routine physical activity. Well, a physical activity that has a special character in, ap in, in, in application. You, yes, to well, well, I'll make it even more specific to make it easy. Do you come in direct contact with the people whom you are serving? No, no. I do not. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you do something for them that can be carried out without their ever seeing you or talking to you? No. No. That makes it four down and six to go, Mr. Goebel. Uh, the service that you perform, uh, would, would you just, uh, would the person come just one time for this service? Rather than in a series? Rather than in a series? Not no. usually, no. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Uh, they would come more than once for your service, is that correct? If usually. they were to utilize so it would, efficiently, right. yes. Uh, uh, do you work for a profit-making organization? No. Oh, that isn't the way I meant Six to Six down and four to go, oh, Mr. Sorry. Sir. <laughs> Are you employed by some branch of either the federal, state, or city government? Yes, I am. Is it the federal government? No. Seven down and three to go, Miss Gilgallen. Uh, I forgot where she was from. May I ask that? New York no. City. New York City. Oh. Is it the city government? Yes. Um, do you have something to do with the, the mayor's office? No. No, and we've just run out of time, so we'll throw all the cards over. This was a very tough one, but a very interesting one. Miss Simon is a television school teacher on New York's local channel 11. She uh, works with the Board of Education on the State Regents Program, and you teach a prog program called The Wonder of Words, if That's I remember right, correctly, right. which is an instructional course for youngsters in the third, third, and, fourth third and fourth grade. What lucky youngsters they are, and thank you very much. Thank for you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Happy note. Good night, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Good night, John. Good night, George. Come again. Thank you. Good night, Arlene. Good night, George. I look forward to seeing you Tuesday night. And I'll see you every night, Bennett, huh? 
in Detroit. Good night. <laughs> Good night, John. <laughs> Please. There's too much levity on this program. <laughs> Good night, Bennett, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todd. This is Johnny Olson's sister. What's My Line has been brought to you by...